So you will see again uh, all the, the framework of the green function at the Pentagon within, but it will be uh, focused more on the practical implementation of this method. So you will see exactly the equations that are implemented in the code. And uh, okay, so you have one hour of time. <laughs> okay, thank you, Maurizia. So I'm Daniele Varsano from uh, Italian Research Council and also of the Max, European Max Center, which uh, uh, I'm glad to say is the main sponsor of, uh, of this school. So uh, today, the, I mean, the, the, the topic of this lecture is uh, going uh, a bit on the common approximation that enters in a real GW calculations. In the previous lectures, you saw, and I hope you appreciated, uh, the beauty of the glorious Helene uh, equations. But uh, then uh, now we move from uh, let's say, the, the garden of Eden of the theory to the human suffering uh, of a real calculation in our, in our computers. And uh, it, that's uh, important to know about implementation and about practical approximation that we need to run our calculations uh, uh, because uh, in this way we also know what to expect for the JW calculation in terms of, uh, in terms of accuracy and in terms also of what we can calculate and what we cannot expect to calculate. Sometimes uh, we have a forum in the, with the Yambo code you can subscribe, you can access from the web page, and uh, where we used to help users, we have problem, uh, uh, want clarification with the code, that sometimes that arrives uh, uh, questions from users that uh, something like, I'm trying uh, to calculate the quasi-particle gap of uh, strongly correlated uh, I don't know, metal oxides, uh, nickel oxides. Uh, this does not match experiment, uh, what I did wrong. This is the input, and probably you did not anything wrong, just you cannot expect to match the experiment uh, resorting on the approximation, on the GW approximation and the current implementation, on the most common implementation of the GW approximation. So I will recall a bit uh, some concepts that have been already illustrated yesterday, also today by Andrea, to arrive to the uh, equation we want to deal with and we will see then uh, extensively in the afternoon uh, during the and so on, uh, all the variables governing uh, and uh, uh, to have, um, to control, to have a meaningful ca calculations. So we already seen that it's very useful to divide <laughs> our uh, excitation in our materials in a neutral uh, and uh, uh, charged approximations. Uh, the topic here, GW, deals with the charged approximation. Tomorrow we will see uh, how to deal with the neutral ex excitation, with, uh, with absorption, essentially, the excitonic effect. And now, so we are going uh, to look to what we want to calculate and give interpretation to direct or indirect uh, photomission experiments. And so just important to see that uh, essentially conservation of energy and conservation of momentum uh, give access uh, to ARPES experiments uh, and the process in the system is uh, to pass from n electron system to n minus uh, one electron systems uh, and uh, vice versa for uh, inverse photoemission we pass from an electron, n electron si uh, system to n uh, plus one. This is the conservation of uh, uh, of the energy and from this we measure the density of unoccupied states in, in case of the inverse uh, photoemission uh, experiment. Let's have a look uh, with the workhorse, uh, first uh, the workhorse uh, of the electronic structure calculation nowadays. It is uh, the density functional theory. These are the very famous uh, Konsham equation of 65 that, uh, I mean, that uh, give uh, the success uh, of the theory because, I mean, the DFT itself uh, became very useful. I mean, it's a, a theorem of quantum mechanics that became useful so once we know how to solve uh, this Konesham equation, all the uh, <coughs> many body effects, uh, let's say, are contained in uh, this exchange correlation uh, potential and uh, its uh, glory comes also because of its moderate computational costs. And we know that uh, we have a very good prediction of ground state geometry and uh, uh, the electronic structures. So uh, what about uh, band gap? Probably yesterday you already know the, the famous band gap problem. 
And uh, here in this, uh, uh, in this plot uh, from a paper of Marfa Schiffsgardert, here we compare experiments of a series of uh, semiconductors which respect the gap calculated uh, in DFT, local density approximation in this case. As you can see that, that the estimated gap is uh, one half of the experimental one, not even uh, worse than one half. This is not a problem of LDA. This is an intrinsic problem of using DFT, at least as difference of eigenvalues in estimating the gap of, uh, of M materials. Uh, this can be also rationalized because, uh, I mean, if you look again here what you are looking at, I mean, from a photoemission experiment where we measure the kinetic energy of the coming electron and incoming photon energy, we see that uh, these uh, energy levers we are interested in are different of n and n minus one uh, electron. And uh, uh, so the, let's say from here you can just recognize that uh, the ejection or, or, the, or, 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 or um, removal of an electron is, is always a, a many body process. And uh, in many body process in the sense that when you extract an electron from your systems, you are going to extract also the electron hole around your, your electron. So you have different phenomena of relaxation, screening, correlation. So it's hard to treat as a one electron uh, uh, process. So here comes very useful, that has been already commented uh, yeah, today and also yesterday, the concept of the quasi-particle. So the electron plus his screening cloud forming what we call the quasi-particle that will interact with a screened, uh, a screened interaction. So uh, anyway, we have just seen that we cannot calculate uh, gaps from the DFT, but it is not exactly true. Uh, just because uh, uh, I mean the, the plot I showed before with a very bad agreement, uh, it's uh, uh, the usual evaluation of a gap in DFT when we consider the homo and loom of a molecule or the, 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 the minimum conduction band and the maximum valence band. But uh, uh, we can actually write uh, an expression of the gap in this way, performing different calculations of our systems. We consider the system with uh, an electron more an electron and minus one, and we can compute, I mean, DFT give access to total energy and we can evaluate the gap in this way. This is uh, uh, the expression of the gap indeed, just uh, here just uh, has been rewritten uh, the energy in function of the sum of eigenvalues to the other components that form the total energy in density functional theory. This is the Cohn-Sheen gap, this is the one that this is wrong, but if we consider all the other terms, here difference of eigenvalues of n plus one and then electrons, etc. The same for the exchange correlation potential and the Hartree potential. Actually, uh, here this is a set of molecules and uh, we can see that, uh, okay, this is not perfect, uh, but the agreement uh, is not that bad. The problem now is, uh, so why we want to go to GW, many body, when uh, we could uh, calculate uh, gaps with density functional theory, which is much more feasible, is that uh, for uh, periodic solids, uh, adding an electron or removing an electron of the system is not feasible. I mean, because uh, we are dealing with a bulk, we have a unit cell, and a repeated unit cell in the space, usually in plane waves when we treat with bulk, and uh, the, uh, in periodic solids, uh, this operation, that uh, this kind of calculation is not feasible. So uh, this is why, as showed by Andrea one hour before, the green functions uh, is the central variable that uh, naturally contains as its poles uh, the excitation energy we are looking for, exactly the, the quasi-particle excitation energy, exciton lifetimes. Uh, just to mention here, I will show some uh, at the end of the lecture, some example. Uh, using a green function theory, we have also access to total energies and uh, to any expectation value of uh, one particle operator. So uh, it's very powerful, uh, this uh, green, the, the, the many perturbation theory and the green function method. 
So this was already shown by Andrea. This is the definition of the green function, the propagation, I mean the creation of an electron at a time and position at t2. We propagate in the system for a time t2 minus t1 in an interacting Hamiltonian, we annihilate, and uh, he, this is the Lehmann expression, and uh, uh, it can be easily shown that these EJ here, the poles, are exactly the, the, the many particle excitation energy we are looking for. Okay, now, how to obtain the green function? How to calculate the green function? Uh, we are in many body perturbation theory. Let's say that uh, we start from something that uh, we know, we know how to calculate, we approximate, it's something that we manage to calculate, and uh, <coughs> which we evaluate what is not known, hoping that the difference is small. So let's say we know a G note, usually a non-interacting Hamiltonian. A G note you can already imagine, I mean you so also yesterday in the class, which is our starting point. G note is usually the green function of a density functional theory calculations. We add an interactions and uh, this is the definition of the self-energy, everything is unknown of the interacting system is put in, uh, in sigma, in the self-energy. Okay, so from the equation of the motion of the green function, we can arrive to these equations. And uh, uh, if we know uh, the, the self-energy, now we arrive to the definition, I mean the approximation of the self-energy, we arrive in the Lehmann representation to the quasi-particle equation. This is the equation we want to solve. This is the Dyson orbitals. This is the self-energy. As you can see, uh, I mean, written in this way, naively, one uh, can uh, think about some similarity with to the Konsham equation, but important difference, conceptual difference, is that self-energy contains uh, many body effects uh, as the exchange correlation potential in, 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 uh, in DFT, but uh, here this is the potential of a fictitious system. This is uh, the, the real potential felt by the added or removed electron from the system. The self-energy is not Hermitian, it's not local, it is energy dependent, so this complicates a lot the solution of the questions. And then, as uh, uh, highlighted by, uh, by Andrea, here the FS are not normal and uh, the, the energy here are complex. So it's uh, much harder than a density functional theory calculation. Okay, how to obtain now the self-energy? This is the Pentagon already shown by Andrea. This is uh, the, the very famous Edin equation. Let's, I would say that it's quite impossible to solve self-consistently. We can try to iterate, and uh, we start from G equal G naught, so an independent particle calculation. We know how to calculate the green function of this uh, non-interacting Hamiltonian. We start uh, just uh, setting the self-energy equal to zero, so this means then that the vertex is uh, discarded, is neglected, equal to one, and uh, we arrive to the equation of the GW approximation. So sigma is exactly GW. Here we have an expression for the polarization where we have neglected the, um, the vertex and, sorry, and here we have a Dyson equation for the green function and, a and another Dyson equation for the, for the screened electron uh, potential. Okay. Note, it's important to, uh, when we uh, talk about GW, so approximation is that uh, the vertex is totally neglected. So it means that the GW cannot provide, uh, in rare cases, what cannot provide the, the right solution. And uh, uh, here, this is another important approximation that is usually done, not always. Here, as G, as green function of our systems, we consider the non-interacting green function, G naught. Okay, so G is the green function of the non-interacting systems. This is the expression of our self-energy in time, 
by Fourier transform, we have here an expression in frequency domain, and uh, for what concern W, this is our Dyson equation for the screen and electron potential, and uh, here the approximation G equal G naught, we have also an expression for the polarization function that will be G naught, G naught, something that we can indeed put in our codes and, uh, uh, and calculate. So, first step is to solve an independent particle calculation, for, exa for example an LDA or any other flavor of density functional theory, and we can build in this way, this is the expression in real space of uh, the uh, polariz polarization that is made of non-interacting non electron and holes uh, as shown here in this diagram. Uh, with this, this choice of the polarizations, here we arrive, this is the expression of the screened potential that uh, obeys a Dyson equation as was shown by Andrea yesterday it can be seen also in a classical way. So W will be the potential plus the potential felt here for a test charge to induce the density by the perturbations. So here we say that the induced density is such that the system responds independently as an independent system to the total potential, not the external potential, but the total potential, the external plus the induced, and this is indeed the, the random phase approximation. And this is an approximation. So here we can see the, in the, with this choice of P, this is the diagram, the infinite diagram that are, that are included in, in the polarization, so the bubble approximation. We have P is P naught, G naught, G naught, and uh, all the bubble diagrams are included. So we have seen now the sigma GW as a G0 consham W, and usually this is uh, uh, what is uh, uh, done in practice is uh, uh, to divide the self energy in two pieces. We are just uh, adding and subtracting uh, the Bayer column potential here, and uh, we arrive to a definition that what is called exchange self-energy and correlation self-energy. This is something we will see, we will calculate uh, practically this, uh, this, uh, this afternoon. Um, this is the expression uh, in, in, uh, in real space, uh, and uh, uh, this can be integrated in the frequency domain analytically, and we arrive to the expression of the Hartree-Fox exchange term. This does not depend on the, on the frequency anymore, this is a static uh, term, and uh, here it is uh, the uh, expression for the cor correlation potential. The, the presence of W with this frequency dependence, it made it uh, computationally demanding, and uh, uh, you will see it is the most, con most consuming part uh, of, uh, uh, of our calculations. So, uh, practical implementation of these equations. There are many codes in the market. Uh, most of them, uh, many of them uh, use uh, the same uh, uh, approach in terms of basis set. This is uh, the uh, reciprocal space and frequency domain. Uh, just to mention, uh, I mean, this is the Yambo code, the implementation of the Yambo code, but there are others, uh, famous code as Abinit, as uh, GW Berkeley, and uh, probably many others uh, I forget to to mention, but it's not the only recipes and the, the only standard, uh, the, the only implementation uh, we have. There, there exist uh, many codes, uh, real space and real time implementation uh, by Godby and Richard Nitz. Uh, use of lo localized basis set uh, that is uh, very convenient uh, when dealing with finite systems, let's say molecule clusters, uh, uh, because you use localized sets and uh, these. Uh, uh, allow to, uh, to be very performant in the calculation of, uh, of, uh, of integrants. Uh, here there is the, yeah, the Rolfing code, I don't know the name, but there is the code of Feliciano Giustino, the, 
Fiesta Code, where also Claudio that is here is involved. Uh, there is the code of Fabien Bruneval, Mol GW, they are very performant, but uh, I mean they are meant for localized systems, for molecules and not for bulk system solids. Uh, then other implementation, Paolo Mari make use of localized uh, money function. Surely I forgot many of uh, other codes. Uh, and now, now we stuck in this uh, reciprocal space frequency domain implementation. Uh, this is uh, uh, the expression that are coded in Yambo in uh, um, in plane wave set. Just uh, the, the expression before we have developed in, in, in plane wave. Uh, this is the exchange part of the self energy. These are the oscillator strengths. This is the correlation part and you can see that we have to manage with the frequency integral here of the epsilon minus one with the frequency dependent. And uh, so also at, uh, we have seen, we have to arrive to this expression, uh, we have done already several approximations. Uh, so we are talking now to what it's called the G naught W naught. Uh, so it means that the degree function is then G naught from the DFT calculation from the, and, uh, and the W also the polarization has been calculated as G naught G naught. So even at this, uh, uh, at this uh, level, let's say that the, the, the basic level, the calculation is rather laborious. Uh, here I start to mention some uh, uh, important uh, uh, ingredients that should be checked when doing this kind of calculations. Uh, for instance, here we have an integration over the Brillouin zone. That means uh, that uh, we need uh, a, a converged K-point sampling, which is not the same convergences that uh, we achieve for a DFT calculation, should be checked exactly for the calculation of this kind of integral. Here we have a sum over unoccupied states. Here it enters a closer relation, so this uh, uh, summation in line of principle infinite uh, and uh, something that should be checked carefully in order to obtain meaningful results. I mean, this is the basis of the best practice of GW calculation. Otherwise, I think you can get whatever if you, your parameters are not uh, properly converged. And here, the most uh, complicated part, maybe I would say, is the integration in the energy domain. Uh, this is just the slide you have in your cheat sheet, just uh, the, uh, what I already uh, said here for the sigma exchange integration of the Brillouin zone some occupied bands and here there are uh, the uh, num name of the variables that governs the convergence of these uh, uh, of these expressions uh, here the same uh, about the um, the correlation part of the self energy uh, now let's have a look to this integral in frequency domain uh, in principle, you should, uh, you can calculate this numerically. This can be done, but you need to converge. I mean, in a, in a simple way, you need to sample. So you calculate your RPA, the electric function matrix, uh, for a lot of frequencies, then summing, in order to have the integral. This can be done. Actually, Yambo can do that. Uh, it's, um, it's very cumbersome. And uh, usually, as this is done in many of this code, and also Yambo does, uh, uh, make uh, uh, use of uh, uh, an approximations. We model this uh, uh, matrix. Each element of the matrix can be modeled. Uh, usually, we have the imaginary part of epsilon minus one, the microscopic content, uh, it's uh, uh, exhibited a sharp peak, I mean, it's the plasmon peak. So we can do in many cases, the bold approximation that our function is a picket function around is plasmon peak, is plasmon frequency. So we can model is, this is the expression that you use, use to model. It is, uh, uh, it is uh, a one pole, just one pole uh, wave function. We have to calculate the residual and the uh, pole of this, uh, uh, of the epsilon minus one gg prime. Uh, once uh, we are able to do that, then this integral is analytic. How to evaluate 
this, uh, this uh, auto evaluate these uh, parameters here, let's say there are many recipes in the literature. Uh, here are some um, references, Ibert St. Louis, Godwin Eats, uh, Engel Farid. Uh, what Yambo implements is the richer need, the, the Godwin Eats uh, uh, recipes uh, that uh, means uh, essentially to perform a calculation for two frequency, usually the static uh, value omega equals zero and uh, to a uh, complex uh, frequency. Uh, which is an input of our, uh, of our code, uh, of our calculation, and then uh, this is uh, two equations uh, in two variables, we get the two, uh, the two value and we can plug here in the analytic expression of the frequency integral. Uh, here I want to show just uh, uh, the performance of uh, different uh, way, different uh, recipes for the plasma pole approximation, in particular this uh, uh, Iberst and Louis. Iberst and Louis, a difference uh, of the Godwin needs, uh, uh, consider the static limit, but then uh, the coefficients are evaluated through some uh, sum rules of the epsilon minus one. Uh, here you can see that uh, it, this is the real part around the real axis of the uh, epsilon minus one uh, of the screening for a silicon, diamond, zinc oxide, and metallic uh, neon. And uh, um, in the case of silicon, everything is similar. Here you can see some difference. And here is the impact of different approximations. Uh, GN is the Godwin Eats, this is the Hibbert and Lewis, here are other models. This is the reference, it is the numerical calculation of the, of the self-energy. So calculating for a, a number of, uh, of, of frequencies, so let's say this is the, the reference and this is the experiment. As you can see that uh, beside the silicon everything uh, works perfectly, uh, for other systems uh, big difference arise. So let's have a look, for instance, to the zinc oxide. Here we have the Godwin X that uh, differs by 0.01 electron volt uh, from the reference. Here the Ibert St. Louis seems to be uh, much poorer in this sense, but uh, note that uh, Ibert St. Louis that has been widely used uh, somehow is more, in many cases, uh, is uh, uh, approach better the experiment. But this is, I would say, an artifact in the sense that the reference here is the, uh, <laughs> the reference <laughs> here is the exact uh, computation of the, of the integral over there. Here in the case of zinc oxide, there is a, a nice work of Marty Stankowski where analyzed in details uh, the performance and the convergences of different, uh, uh, of different uh, models. Uh, Anyway, this is the accuracy that we expect from the uh, plasma pole uh, uh, approximation. So, remind, this is another approximation that in a calculation, it's a bold approximation. In many cases, uh, uh, well, actually not so many, but <laughs> in some cases, uh, uh, the plasma pole model fails. For instance, interfaces, uh, uh, for instance, uh, there is a work by Andrea on the electrons uh, in, uh, in copper where it is shown that the plasma pole approximation is not suitable. And in this case, a full integration is needed. And uh, there are also other methods to perform the integral, the contour deformations, uh, alternative methods. Uh, and uh, here there is a Dario. There is a poster of, of Dario that actually is working on a multiple expansion of the dielectric function. And there are some uh, preliminary results on that. So we have a plasma pole, you need calculation of the screening matrix for two frequencies, a direct integration, uh, hundreds of frequencies. So you can imagine the, the computational costs. Other methods are contour deformation, 20, 30 frequency, I would say something like that. And now we are exploring an intermediate regime uh, to deal with uh, this uh, uh, integration. Okay. Uh, this is again a slide taken in the cheat sheet that uh, is uh, the, uh, what are the input variables governing the, the plasma pole, so what do you have to care? Essentially, you always calculate uh, 
the static limit, you calculate the, uh, the electric matrix in, uh, in this PPA energy, fix it here, and uh, of course so you need a convergent calculation of your matrix for these two frequencies and these are the variables, again the dimension of the matrix here, GG prime, uh, this is the RL stands for reciprocal lattice, you will see this afternoon, you can also give a cutoff in energy, and here the number of bands in the summations that you need to converge, I mean the, the electron hole pairs you have to include <coughs> in your polarization. Okay. Uh, now, once we know, we see how to calculate G note, <coughs> we see the W note also in its uh, uh, frequency uh, behavior. We want, uh, again, solve this equation here we assume that our Dyson function are our Koenigsham integral. This is another approximation that enters in the, in the calculations. So uh, with this approximation, now we can solve this, uh, uh, this equation, the quasi-particle equation. This is a non-linear equation. What we can do is uh, either develop around our Koenigsham eigenvalue and solve at first order. This is what usually done. Uh, in Yambo there are other alternatives, uh, the second iterative method, just iterative method uh, to find the root of our expression and of the, our, uh, our function. Uh, okay, so we have all the ingredients in place and we can arrive here to what we want to calculate, that the uh, quasi-particle energy of our system. Uh, I want to mention here uh, an algorithm uh, implemented in Yambo developed in, in the group of uh, Xavier Gonza. Uh, when calculating the self energy here, we have a summation of unoccupied bands. Uh, this could be very painful. I mean, you have to calculate many, many, calcul include many, many bands in your summation. This means also that you have to perform a non self consistent calculations. Uh, with many, many bands. Many, many bands could be thousands of bands. Uh, this algorithm that uh, we named in the code terminator, but this is our jargon, uh, consists simply in, uh, it's very simple to understand, and let's uh, uh, truncate our, uh, our submission to a certain band, this uh, big and B, and uh, let's see the, uh, what is missing? I mean, well, what is missing from the other bands we are not including? And we do an approximation, the extrapolar approximation. We, uh, we assume that all the states above this, uh, no, this high number of bands have the same average energy, epsilon sigma. Uh, making this, uh, making this, uh, this approximation, now, now we can exchange here the order of the summation and we calculate, uh, we can calculate here what is uh, missing from the summations and so we can, uh, uh, we can correct the value we obtain it summing up and B to these corrections and uh, as you can see here, this accelerate a lot they converge with respect to the empty band center in our calculation. This is uh, the conduction band maximum and the valence band minimum for bulk silicon. Uh, this is a cluster, I think. And um, without uh, this correction, uh, you need uh, more than probably 1,500 bands. Uh, here they are already converged with a half of this number of bands. Uh, this is uh, the valent ma maximum for a, a titanium dioxide nanowire, uh, many occupied bands. Uh, this is the calculation without opting uh, any correction. Here adopting different correction, uh, just uh, playing with uh, the value of uh, the uh, of the extra pole, uh, of the extra polar that we have uh, introduced uh, in order to collect all the transition above that energy. And this can be also tuned to achieve uh, here a speed up, uh, a very important uh, uh, speed up. Uh, what happened 
uh, in a GW calculation when uh, we uh, deal with non-periodic, non strictly three-dimensional periodic system. If you want to calculate a nanostructure, an isolated molecule, a nanowire, a wire, a polymer, a carbon nanotubes, a 2D systems, a slab. So two systems that are non-periodic in some of the directions. This is a plane wave code, so our representation of the systems is always replicated in space. We are always dealing with an array. And the GW calculation, I mean, really feel the long range interaction. And uh, so the naive, uh, the, the first thing uh, that comes in, in your mind, uh, this is a problem that you have also in a DFT calculation if you want, is to enlarge more and more so putting more and more vacuum in the non-periodic direction. Unfortunately, the convergence with respect to the vacuum is very slow, and the scaling of the code, of the computational cost, putting more and more vacuum is, uh, uh, is very bad. Uh, so here, in just a representation, this is a bulk in 2D, this is a wire 1D, this is an isolated molecule, where I repeat also here the bulk, the the supercell, the supercell uh, sites, and there is a simple idea that uh, uh, do not treat, I mean, to modify our column potential. Our interaction will be not one over R, but uh, will be one over R until a certain threshold, and then will be zero. This uh, setting properly the value, I mean, the definition of this domain with respect also to our supercell sites, permits to speed up the calculations with respect of the, of the vacuum. So this is our expression. We are dealing in a reciprocal space, so we, fast Fourier, tra we, we Fourier transform these uh, uh, modified Coulomb potentials uh, and uh, for some uh, definition of the, of the domain, of the region. This is uh, the case of a sphere for a molecule you can put in a sphere, and this is you, you end up with this analytical expression. This is more complicated in the case of a cylinder. These are Bessel function that comes here. This is uh, the, the, the signal sites for a 2D system where we cut uh, to the signal sites of, uh, of, our, um, of our supercell. Uh, these are the references where I'll there explain detail, uh, in detail. Take uh, a care as to be taken to the limit for q equal zero, g equal zero of this potential. Here you don't have any problem, but here you have uh, uh, divergences uh, that are not anymore one over q square, but uh, one over q in this case, it is logarithmic in this other case uh, that uh, you should take uh, some uh, uh, caution when dealing with the limit with q equal zero, that's one you're interested when calculate optical absorption. Uh, okay, here is an example. This is a 1D system. This is an atomic chain. Here you have the interchain distance. Here is the supercell volume. Uh, as you can see, the, the gap here, this point, uh, show a very, very slow convergence with respect to the vacuum. The modified column potential allow you to converge much, uh, much faster. I think you will see some application of this and in the tomorrow in the calculation of, uh, of absorption spectra. Uh, okay, let me summarize what is the workflow of a typical GW calculation. We always start with the DFT calculations. This is something you have seen also yesterday. The first step is always a DFT calculations. And this provides us a consham eigenvalue and eigenfunction. Both are used to calculate our polarization, our green function, the polarization then is used to calculate our screened potential, usually done in the plasma pone approximation, even if it's not mandatory, but if, uh, if uh, it can be done, it's uh, very recommended. We build up the self-energy, and then we can solve the, our quasi-particle uh, equation and extract the quasi-particle energies. Okay, so as shown by Andrea before, GW, in many cases, semiconductors, 
works or at least uh, provide a very much better agreement with experiment with respect to the DFT calculation of the GW. Uh, so we have a huge improvement uh, with respect to the LDA. In some case, uh, the agreement, I would say, it's perfect. This is the case of Diamond. This matched the experiment, uh, but uh, for the wrong reason. <laughs> Maybe Andrea, I think, worked on exactly on Diamond uh, uh, effects uh, of, uh, I mean, so don't be scared if you don't match the experiment, but don't be so happy even if you match, because uh, it could be <laughs> the wrong reason, the, the matching with the experiment. So here, other effect enters, so there is no, the story is not uh, uh, just a GW calculation that explain the gap uh, of, the, uh, of the diamond also, because it varies with, uh, with temperature. Uh, metals, we have talked before, uh, uh, about uh, uh, semiconductor here, metals. Uh, also for metals, uh, with some care, uh, with, with some care, uh, uh, we have uh, a very uh, good uh, matching with the experiment, with the photo emission experiment, uh, much better than LDA. Here, it's important to note that in the case of metal, there is a breakdown of plasma pore approximation. Uh, this is a work by Andrea, of 2002, and uh, here had to resort to. Uh, full uh, integration for obtaining the, 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 the self-energy. Uh, here, uh, this, uh, if we can define here a local potential from the GW, is, uh, this is a metallic surface, aluminum 111, and it can be seen that the GW is also able to catch image potentials. Image potential, I mean, this is a polarization effect and it is catched by the, 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 the GW uh, approximation. Uh, as I told in the introduction, I, in the, the first slides, uh, we can also calculate uh, total energy using GW. I mean, we have the green function. With the green function, we can have access to total energy. Uh, here is the sample of three-dimensional uh, 3D electron gas. This is a work by Pablo Garcia Gonzalez and Rex Cobbi, where they showed here that uh, uh, the correlation energy here uh, of the three-dimensional electron gas at uh, high density, a smaller S, uh, the GW approximation, but GW, this is not G0, W0, I mean the self-consistent one, <coughs> not the vertex, uh, the self-consistence in terms of GW, provide uh, a perfect agreement with quantum Monte Carlo calculation. Uh, as far as I heard, uh, this is not the final story. I mean, there are works, uh, I mean, there is uh, Tommaso that is also working on that and uh, maybe you don't agree totally on this uh, perfect agreement with, uh, well, we have also Mike here that is a quantum Monte Carlo guru. And <laughs> uh, so probably this perfect match is not the final story. the Rex God with Pablo Garcia Gonzalez, this was a slab of gelium, they show that the GW is also able to, uh, to match, I mean, to, to, to represent the Van der Waals interactions. Uh, again, on total energy here, uh, very briefly, there are works that also calculate here lattice parameter, for instance. Uh, here we can see that lattice parameters uh, in GW is, uh, uh, is quite good. This is self-consistent GW. Uh, quite good means that, uh, I mean, it's not uh, better than GGA anyway. <laughs> but we know that GGA is, uh, is the workhorse for this kind uh, of calculations. So we have, uh, we have good, good energy here, but uh, the same foot uh, when you calculate the, the electron the, 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 the electronic properties, the electrospectrum, 
we can see that the self-consistent GW is worse uh, than the, the simple G0 uh, W0 approximation. So that's uh, not always the self-consistency here is better than G0 W0. Remember always that you have forgot, you have neglected the vertex. So uh, that could be uh, important. Optical absorption, if we, uh, this is the silicon, I think will be shown tomorrow in many flavors. This, uh, this picture, we have the experiment, we have the RPA absorption. If we just uh, plug GW energy, this does not the job. I mean, it's, uh, it's not, uh, uh, it's here in this case, it's just a rigid shift. So something is missing in the description of the absorption that will be the topic uh, of, uh, of the theoretical and the practical lecture of, uh, of tomorrow. So some important thing that is missing and we will have the, the lecture by Maurizia and Fulvio addressing this, uh, uh, this point. So I arrive to some conclusive remarks. Uh, GW, many virtues. Parameter-free method provides uh, accurate results, uh, quasi-particle energies, also total energy, also provides information on lifetime of the excitations. Uh, it is the starting point uh, for op optical absorption in many body perturbation theory. As you will see that quasi-particle energy are ingredients entering in uh, the solution in the, in, in the build-up of the beta salpeter kernel. And uh, uh, G note, tadium note, uh, I try to show you that uh, even it's, uh, uh, in its uh, uh, simpler flavor, it's a quite complicated calculation, it's a quite complicated workflow. Uh, but uh, I mean, a virtue of this kind of calculation that the algorithm is suitable for, uh, uh, for HPC computations. So they scale uh, very well, if well implemented in modern machine, different architectures. Just to mention, Yambo now works also on, uh, on GPU uh, accelerators. Uh, so, if your results don't match the experiments, take a message before asking to the forum uh, what I'm doing wrong, uh, check carefully your converger parameter. I call this uh, <laughs> this boring part, but uh, we will have a lecture just now addressing also how to make, uh, how to make machine work for you for this, uh, uh, this part of the, of the calculation. It's just uh, repeating or repeating your calculation increasing parameters. Uh, even at GNOW note, uh, again, several, several converter parameter and approximation have to be checked. Here, just uh, the uh, sum of the, of the ingredients we discussed now that should be checked, as you will see. And uh, also, I didn't mention uh, Yambo, as uh, many other plane wave codes are uh, uh, make use of pseudo potentials. Uh, so you neglect core electrons. Uh, this have an impact also on the double calculation. And uh, this is something that should be checked, uh, main also in terms of how many electrons enters effectively in your calculation. So if your system needs uh, to treat explicitly semi-core states, this has an impact uh, in, the, in, the, in the calculations of the, of the, of the <coughs> quasi-particle energy. So don't forget that GW is in approximations. So it's not the final story. This is already mentioned by Andrea before. And uh, uh, Something that I didn't mention, uh, uh, but you can understand, uh, uh, G not W not uh, is not self-consistent. Uh, so you always can have a dependence on your starting point. And uh, like a rule of thumb, uh, the, 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 if your starting point, your DFT starting point uh, is uh, uh, more uh, uh, close to what you get, then the GW connection will be more accurate. So uh, it's not independent of the, 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 of, of the uh, DFT calculation behind the, the G node W node. This is important for molecule, and uh, in Yambo now it's also possible to do a GW calculation on top of a hybrid calculations. Um, 
even in partial self consistency partial self consistency uh, essentially we uh, we mean uh, again values only self consistency so you calculate uh, your uh, quasi particle energy and these quasi particle energy are then used to build up again the screening and the green function so a new self energy and iterate usually it converges very fast uh, in this way, the, the problem of the starting point is mitigated. It's not resolved, but it is mitigated. Uh, and, uh, uh, but anyway, about the wave function, you always assume the initial conscient wave function. So here there is uh, still a reminiscence of the, of the starting calculation. RPA level for the screening uh, and uh, uh, plasmon pole model. Plasmon pole model in particular can be critical for uh, several uh, materials. So, this is my final, uh, so I would say GW is, is successful interpretation of spectroscopical properties of many systems, but uh, it relies on many approximations that can also, also fail. So I, let me, would like to thank the sponsor that uh, uh, funded this school. So the Max uh, uh, Center of Excellence, the PSIK Network uh, and the ECTP. Um, okay, I would like to leave here some uh, uh, reference. These are the seminal paper of the Dean's equations we have seen before. Here are some reviews, and I know I put here just uh, two very recent uh, uh, reviews that appeared the last year and this year on GW. It's a it's kind of compendium uh, that I find quite useful. And uh, these are the two papers on the practical implementation in, uh, in the Yambo code, and uh, I thank you for your attention.